Lesson 78, Rational Equations. Sometimes we have to um, add fractions. And sometimes those fractions have different denominators. And sometimes those fractions also have variables and different denominators. And we have to handle those. So this is a little bit of a review. We've done some of this in the past, but we're going to go ahead and look at it. Um, these are just a little bit more complicated. So let's look at this one. This is 78.1. We'll just jump right into our examples. We have y over 2 plus 1 fourth equals y over 6. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to find a common denominator. And looking at these and knowing my multiplication tables and the factors of what they might have in common, the least common multiple is going to be 12 for these. So using that least common multiple, I'm going to divide it by this factor and that's the number that I'm going to multiply the whole thing by. So that's the explanation. It's easier to see me do it. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so if I multiply this by 6, I get a number over 12. So 6 times y is 6y over 12. Got me? 12 divided by 4 is 3, so 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 6 is 2, so that's 2y over 12. Now, we have done this in the past where... Um, with decimals where we multiplied every term in an equation by the same number to get rid of the decimal and to turn it into a whole number. We can do the same thing with a denominator in an equation. So we can take the whole thing, multiply it by 12, and because it's 12 over 1, that's what a whole number really is. It cancels out of each one. 12 times this cancels out the 12. 12 times this cancels out the 12. 12 over 1 times this cancels out the 12. So they all cancel. And we're left with 6y plus 3 equals 2y. And now we can swim fish. And I'm going to swim the 6y away so that we have y's on one side and uh, the whole number on the other in one step. Okay, so 3 equals negative 4y. We divide both sides by 4 and we get negative 3 fourths equals y. And that is the right answer. However, if you are a little suspect of that, it's always a good idea, if you don't have confidence in your answer, to check your answer. And here's how you would do that. When you have a y by itself, meaning that you have the invisible one in a fraction, all you have to do is this. That's the answer for that, right? Plus 1 fourth equals 1 over 6 times y. Simple, 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 okay? It's the same thing. All right, so because the reason for that is because you can always put y over 1 and when you multiply y goes back over your denominator. It's the same thing. Very easy. So now we can sub in negative 3 fourth for y. So we do that here. Right? And we do that here. And so we have negative 3 eighths plus 1 fourth equals negative 3 over 24. We can reduce this because 8 times 3 is 24. So this becomes negative 1 eighth, right? This needs to bump up the denominator. So we can turn this into 2 eighths, right? Negative 3 and positive 2 leaves negative 1 8 and that equals negative 1 8 So that checks out. So your answer over here is correct because we checked it and we got the same thing on one side as we did on the other. So 
everything is copacetic. Let's move on to 78.2. We are given 2x over 7 minus 3x over 2 equals 1 over 3. Now, looking at all of these, these are prime. So the only way that we are going to get a common denominator is to multiply them by each other. And when we do that, we get the number 42 because 7 times 2 is 14, and 14 times 3 is 42. So we are going to take 42 divided by 7, and we get 6. So we say 6 times this whole fraction. So that's going to be 12x over 42, right? And the same thing here. We're going to take 21, because 42 divided by 2 is 21, 21 times 3 is 63x over 42, right? And over here, we have 1 third. And um, 42 divided by 3 is going to be 14. The reason I know that is because 7 times 2 are the other two factors. That's all I'm doing is I'm multiplying the other two factors and then multiplying that. So when I multiply this by 6, I said 2 times 3, that's 6 times that. This one was 7 times 3, was 21. This one will be 7 times 2, 14. Okay? And that's how we get to that. So 14 times 1 is 14, and 14 times 3 is 42. All right, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to multiply each term by 42 over 1, because it's a whole number, and that's going to make the 42 on the bottom cancel out. So it becomes this. Wow. Quick and easy. And we already have all of our x's on the same side. So 63, positive 12 and a negative 63 is going to be a negative 51x and that equals 14. So all we have to do now is divide both sides by negative 51. So x equals a negative 14 over 51. 14 could be reduced by 2 or 7. 51, I don't think it can be. I'll try it and see. Let's see, can we divide 51 by 7? No, and it's not an even number, so we can't divide it by 2. So that's our final answer. And I'm not going to check this for you. I'll let you do that on your own if you want. Because I have the book right in front of me, and that's the answer, so I'm confident it's correct. 78.3. We are given 3y over 2 plus 8 minus 4y over 7 equals 3. Now, we know that this is really 3 over 1, right? Absolutely. So we have 2 and a 7 and a 1. 2 and 7 are prime numbers, so is the 1. 1 doesn't count because it's an identity factor. So we just say 2 times 7 is 14. And that's the denominator we're going to use. So we are going to actually skip a step in this, and we are going to say, all right, 14 divided by 2 is 7. So 7 times 3y is 21y plus 14 divided by 7, because 14 is our common denominator. That leaves 2. 2 times 8 minus 4y. And we have a 1 here. 14 divided by 1 is 14, so we're going to say 3 times 14, which we already know is 42. Right? Right. Now, what did I not do? I didn't do this step over here. 
I didn't put it over 14 and then multiply by 14 and rewrite it. So I just skip this step. If you can skip this step, skip it. If you can't, if you need to see it, write it out. That's completely fine. I'm going to distribute the second term now. So 21y plus 16 minus 8y equals 42. Alright, so 21 minus 8y is going to be 13y. Alright, so I'm going to swim this to the other side. And that's going to give me 13y equals uh, 26. And 13, 26 divided by 13 is going to be 2. So y equals 2. If you want to plug 2 into the original formula or the original equation, you can go right ahead. But my answer matches the book, so I'm confident that it is right. We're going to go on to 78.4. These should seem fairly simple to you. If you are struggling with them, um, you need to contact me. The only new concept that we're really going over is the elimination of the denominator. That should be the new thing that you are working through right now. So let's do x plus 1 over 4 minus 3 over 2 equals 2x minus 9 over 10. Now remember, you can only eliminate the denominator through multiplication in an equation. You have to have some type of equal sign. An inequality sign, it has to be two sides. You can't just have a statement. If you just had this right here and you got a common denominator of 8, you couldn't get rid of the 8 because that would change the entire value of your um, expression. You have to have an expression on both sides of an equal sign or an inequality sign in order to eliminate the denominator through reciprocal multiplication, which means multiplying the entire thing, every term in your equation, by the denominator. We will do that for this one. I'm going to show you one more time how to do that. So looking here, we can see that we have a 4, a 2, and a 10. Given that, 20 is going to be our common denominator. Because I can see that 2 times 10 is 20. And I know that 4 is a factor of 20. So Given that information, I know that I can use 20 as my least common multiple to be my denominator. And that's what I'm going to use. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. So I'm going to say 5 times x plus 1 over 20 minus, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So 3 times 10 is 30 over 20. And that checks because... 3 over 2 is the same as 30 over 20 if you reduce it by 10. So that one's easy. All right, and this one, 20 divided by 10 leaves 2. So we're going to say 2 times 2x minus 9 over 20. Now we're going to multiply every term by 20. So 20 by this, 20 times that, and 20 times that and you just put it over 1. That's how you do that. So then this cancels out, right? This cancels out, and this cancels out. So you are left with 5 times x plus 1 minus 30 equals 2 times 2x minus 9. Now we distribute. This is the step I said you could skip. If you could do this such that you could just write down 5x plus 1 down here and skip this, you can do it. If not, write it down. It's okay to write it down. It's perfectly fine. 
So let's distribute. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times positive 1 is positive 5. Minus 30 equals 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 9 is a negative 18. Okay. Now we swim our fish. Uh, positive 5 and a negative 30, that's going to give us a negative 25. Okay, I'm not swimming my fish, I'm just combining these two. So let's swim this to this side. So we have a negative 25, we're going to swim a positive 25. So let's swim our x to the other side, negative 4x, negative 4x. That's going to leave us, this cancels, this cancels with an x equals negative 18 and a positive 25 is going to be a positive 7. So x equals positive 7. And that's the answer. Okay. All right, to further explain what I did up here with getting rid of the denominator, that's how you're doing. When you have an equation and you have all the same denominator, this You're just doing this and canceling out. Okay? That's all you're doing. That's all that was. Easy peasy. But again, you can only do it when you have an equation, not with just an expression. All right, that's all for Lesson 78. I will see you in Lesson 79.